Hello guys and welcome to my YouTube channel, welcome to Geofly, a project of a Cessna home cockpit simulator that I'm building for the past few months. And this video is the first out of a series of videos I hope that uh, I would like to make to share my knowledge and information that I gathered uh, through this uh, process with you. And uh, today I'm doing this video just to give you a small tour around uh, the fly deck, show you the layout a little bit and the suppliers that I choose to go with and the process uh, I went through in order to reach this point up to now. So come on guys, let me show you around. Alright guys, so an overview of the Cessna fly deck. The uh, flight deck is located in a storeroom, a spare storeroom that I had in uh, my apartment and uh, it's just uh, wide enough to be able for me to put the uh, setup in here and uh, you can currently see the uh, simulator is just loaded and uh, it sits on Albuquerque on the GA ramp. So, Let's uh, take it uh, from the beginning. The visual setup I have used is uh, three TV monitors, 65 inches, that they are connected together in one PC here that runs X-Plane 11. Uh, that, uh, of course, pushes a lot the graphic cards and the GPU, of course, uh, although, guys, since the update with the Vulcan by uh, Lamina Richards, the performance uh, has no issue at all. I'm running in a single PC, uh, three 65-inch monitors, of course they're running in 2K each, but the performance is uh, very satisfying. Uh, the setup is uh, for each monitor I'm using a 70 degree field of view so by looking around I'm getting something like 220 degrees field of view I can see from my 8 o'clock to my 4 o'clock so the project in the future uh, will have uh, the update of getting a cockpit cell all around currently you see I'm just uh, with my flight here which is uh, pretty much 95% full connected and I have my chairs I have my rudder pedals down below rudder pedals are yet not connected though together uh, and I will do that easily pretty much by just connecting them mechanically from one side to the other and uh, I have also a set of uh, this Thrustmaster headphones that I have connected them together through a software and I have an intercom as well. All right, so let's uh, let's sit down here in uh, the flight deck guys and let me show you around. So you see all this setup is pretty much uh, set up from flight illusion okay and uh, all the gouges you see with the glare shields and uh, the panel itself is from flight illusion you can see here from left to right i'm gonna give you a tour the uh, clock uh, it has some functions i can switch from oat to volts and uh, I can have Fahrenheit or I can have Celsius if I want, like this, like this, through that. And then through the select button, I can switch through UTC time, local time, flight time, elapsed time. Here we have the uh, speed indicator. And the speed indicator has a knob that you can turn the disc inside, it's like the real Cessna. Most of them have it and you can just uh, do a small conversion between the temperature you get from the OAT and the uh, press altitude that will give you the true airspeed. Moving on the right, the uh, ADI with uh, a small knob also below like the real one that you can adjust the eyesights 
and uh, currently you see that the airplane is uh, stopped on the apron we are not running our engines so the uh, ADI is just dropped down because it doesn't have any vacuum presser to to work that uh, instrument on the right we have the altitude indicator and the altitude indicator will give me also the uh, option to switch the knob here and uh, change the pressure into millibars or inches on the right and uh, get my conversion there so uh, it's a pretty smooth nice altimeter I really like it I find it like the real one and let's move on below is the vertical speed indicator with a maximum vertical speed of 2000 feet per minute as the real one the uh, heading indicator with two knobs the one is here that you can change the disc in order to match with the wet compass and uh, here you have the heading bag you can switch it either for your reference of flying or you can of course work it out with the autopilot as a heading bag uh, further to the left we have the engine instruments uh, fuel indicators on the left EGT and fuel flow on the right down below uh, oil temperature and pressure vacuum amperage and if we move down here you can see the uh, engine start selector here, the key, the master suites, the alternator. Uh, you see this uh, dummy CBs, they don't do nothing, uh, it's just cosmetic over here. And you see all the light switches together with the avionics master and fuel, flow and fuel pump. So let's move through here. We have the RPM indicator, and uh, up here you see the CDI for NAV1, CDI for NAV2, and the ADF. Over here, guys, this panel, the annunciator panel, is from uh, Simkits. It's uh, not from Flight Illusion. I didn't like the uh, Flight Illusion um, looks, so I thought I will go with the SIM kits. They fit perfectly. The only thing I had to do is remove this switch over here that was located somewhere here, and I just detached it from the, uh, the, the card and moved it here. Easy task. Okay, let's see now the radio rack. Here we have from Flight Illusion again the audio panel, and down below we have real scene gear uh, GNS 530. Down below is the uh, COM2 and NAV2 panel, the squat box, and the autopilot. Here we have the DME on top and down below is uh, the ADF so I know that you would like to see them working so let's go and try that I'll switch the master on you see the uh, uh, initiate panel gives me of course uh, indication that vacuum is not working or pressure and of course the uh, voltage has been drained by the battery and let's switch on the power on the avionics. Alright guys, so you see it's uh, quite nicely, you can turn uh, any frequency here or nav frequency and switch it to the other one. Here we are running real sim gear with the Reality XP software so NAV1 and COM1 is running through uh, the Garmin and uh, as well here with the autopilot box 
We can change through vertical speeds. We can change through different modes, heading modes, let's say. I think even then, even now that we're stopped, if I switch on the autopilot, and I'm sorry for the focus because I'm trying to use manual focus right now. And by switching on the autopilot, you see the yokes will start move to the direction of flight until I will disengage it. Okay. So here as well, we have the uh, DNE, and uh, down below we have the ADF. Okay, so I don't like to drain my batteries, so I will start switching them off and and uh, turn the battery as well off. So this is all about the main panel. Here I have the ELT and the hubs. Uh, those two uh, functions are not present on X-Plane as far as I know, so they're not connected to anything. Uh, the only thing that you can connect the hubs with is just the 12-volt uh, power, so any time that you switch the panel on, it starts recording your hubs. And here, guys, we have a second altimeter, just a standby. And now the thing that I will have to show you, of course, and I have to put the battery on again, you know, to do that is the uh, the uh, flaps indicator. All right. So by getting the flaps down, you see the indicator moving as well. And that guy's uh, is from Flight Illusion as well. Here we have the uh, trim. And uh, we use electric trim on these aircraft as well. So you see, as I'm moving my trim switch on the oak, the uh, electric trim is moving the trim wheel. Down below, we have the fuel selector. And last but not least, here we have our parking brakes. That's from uh, Simax, an Italian brand. And here we have the rudders from Simkit. Uh, not a big fun, fancy thing, guys, but those rudders, at least, they are sturdy, they're all full metal. And uh, for me, it was very important that I could interconnect them together through a big metal cylinder that will pass from one side to the other. So every time that I will use uh, my left pair or my right pair, the other one will follow through this mechanical linkage. So pretty much guys, that's the setup on the fly deck here. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, please comment down below, ask me if you have any question, subscribe to my channel and hit the like button as well. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.